Hello guys and welcome back to my channel and to another video. As the title suggests, I'm going to be taking you through how to find a rental property here in Vancouver, Canada. If you're new here, my name is Sasha. I'm an Australian living here in Vancouver and I've been living here nearly five years and I was lucky enough to not be in the rental game for so long. I got a rental when I moved here that I moved in with my now ex and then I had to find a new place at the beginning of this year and boy oh boy was it challenging. But I am going to show you exactly what I did. I'm going to show you the two outlets that I use to look for property. It's pretty much just Craigslist or Facebook. They're the most common, usually the most reliable, and that's pretty much how to do it unless you're very lucky and have friends or family here that can give you a, a basement suite or give you a room. This is what I would do. And I'm going to take you through all my tips and tricks. If you guys want to follow up video, if there are any questions, please let me know in the comments down below and I would be happy to do a part two, but let's get into it. We're going to screen share and I'm going to show you the first outlet, which is Vancouver Craigslist. Okay. We are on the Craigslist website. It always looks very fake, doesn't it? So we're in the Vancouver, there's different cities, there's different provinces, you can kind of go anywhere, but let's look, go to housing. I went to apartments slash housing. You can also go to rooms, shared, rooms wanted, sublets, temporary, everything like that. So for let's pretend that I am where I was a few months ago and I want to find just an apartment. Let's go to apartments slash housing. So we've gone to Vancouver, BC, Vancouver, housing, apartments, housing for rent. Here we go. On the left hand side, this is the most important part. You can basically decide what you were interested in, basically the price range, everything like that. So let's do, um, we want it furnished because that would be lovely. So let's pretend that we have a cat. Well, I do have a cat. So let's choose cat furnished and the maximum price that we want to spend on a place is $2,000. This will narrow it down very, very quickly. And then we just have a look. So here we are. We have 1850, one bedroom, 521 square foot apartment. It's furnished. And we can look at the map here. You can zoom out and it'll show you whereabouts in the city. So this is what area kind of bordering on Burnaby. We've got, it's in that vicinity. So it says cats are okay. Dogs are okay. It's furnished. And let's have a look, look at all the photos. It almost looks too good to be true when it is like this. And these look like stock photos. I would be very careful. It gives you the address, which is great. But basically from here, you would then hit reply. And then you would text or email never ever just rock up at a place without doing so, even though you have the address, because it could be dodgy or anything like that. You've got your Craigslist thing. So I would copy that and then go to your email address and send a little biography about yourself. If you guys want a template for that, let me know because I did this a lot in December and January. So I'm very much on top of it. And you basically don't give too much information about yourself, but it's like a job interview. You're selling yourself to this place and you want to go and see the property. I would recommend to never be overseas. So if I was in Australia moving here, I would never put money in a place or say yes to a place without seeing it first with my own eyes and taking photos and asking lots of questions. I just think you were doing yourself such a disservice to put money and trust into a stranger without anything to back it up. Like these photos almost look fake for this property and yeah, but it could be amazing. It could be that beautiful and it could be that good a price, but uh, we'll see. Every rental here is paid monthly at the first of the month, a little biography there, which is great. So that is that let's go back and let's choose something a little bit different. Let's go a different way. Let's look at the map view. I love the map view because you can go and be very specific about where you want to go. So let's change. So we've on, we're on the map setting here and I'm going to change it. We're going to say, we don't want it. We don't care if it's furnished. We don't care if there are cats, but we're going to make it even cheaper. Let's see if we can find somewhere for 1500 a month in Vancouver. 
we're going to go zoom in and then we can look at the area. So the numbers here will tell you how many properties are around this area with that price range. So that is UBC. So if you're not a student, I would advise not to live there. Uh, let's look here, this one. So this one, again, you see here, May 13th to May 27th. This means this is a sublet. This is 1200 just for that amount of time, which is such a rip off. And you have to be really careful because you could put money and there's not even a photo. So let's get rid of that one. Let's see if there's anything realistic. Okay, basement suite near UBC. Let's have a look. Wow, <laughs> what a beautiful property. That's what 850 gets you here in Vancouver, guys. Wow, 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 wow. So, renting one room in a two bedroom basement suite. So you're sharing with another person. So you're sharing bathroom and everything. So renting one room in a two room basement suite. Comes fully furnished with utilities and Wi-Fi included. Gives you where it is. This is your chance to get a nice suite near UBC. And very hard to find around August. So does that mean it's only available in August? A question to ask. It says it's available now. Um, so I think because the school year starts in September that that's what they're saying to get in early. And again, I would reply, give a short bio about yourself and always tell someone where you're going. Put find my friends on, be really aware of your surroundings because if you're going to a property and it's just, it can be an unsafe experience. So I would usually let my, let friends know where I was going and I would say I'm viewing, like I told my coworkers at work, um, so just be really on top of that because it could be dodgy or you could put yourself in a really unsafe scenario. Also choose times of the day where there are people around. Don't just go, you know, Saturday 8 p.m. and go look at a place or something like that in the burbs because that could be putting yourself in an unsafe position. Daylight's usually great to be able to see cracks and dents and mold or whatever. So try and go in daytime hours, like have a time, like let's go between 9 a.m. and 2 p.m. on a Saturday and just see a bunch of properties and just smash them out. Again, Always go see it in person. Yes, it may be more unsafe than saying yes by looking at photos, but you don't know what's behind these photos. You don't know much about the landlord. You don't know if it's what the space is actually like, if it's freezing, if there's actually heating, like you're not seeing the water pressure. All of these things are really important before you put money and lock yourself into a lease. So just be aware of that. So that is kind of Craigslist. So let's go back to the housing section. And what I like is, wait, can we go back to the beginning? So rooms shared or rooms wanted. So rooms wanted is if you want to put an ad for yourself, be like, hi, I'm Sasha. I'm 30. I've got a cat. I want a room. Then landlords slash tenants, they can go to this and look for you. Basically, if it's room slash shared, you're looking for like, it's looking for a share house basically. So let's go private room. Cats are okay. We want it furnished and let's say the maximum price we want to do is 800. You're on a bit of a budget. Let's see what's available. Honestly, not much for 800. Let's do, let's be more realistic. Let's do a thousand. A thousand a month in Vancouver is like very standard if you're sharing. Uh, and let's just get rid of cats and see what opens up because some places are not pet friendly. Wow, there's really not much. Okay, let's look at this one. Here we go. Whoa. Price per night. See? Dodgy. Let's go back. Um, why is this being so dodgy? Furnished. 1200. Why aren't there any rooms? Oh, there we go. Okay, this is more like it. So let's look downtown. Let's see what's available downtown. Again, you can just hover over and this should come up with properties or you go closer and closer and have a look. So here we go. So this room here is $1,177 for a one bedroom for 700 square foot. That's the apartment, not the room. And it's a private furnished room for rent in English Bay. So you've got the map there. It gives you the cross streets there, so it's a lovely area. And if you go out, you can see the larger map of Vancouver. But again, 
go to like arrive in Vancouver first and look at the areas yourself. Get a bus and go to different areas and get a feel for the area. Again, you don't wanna move in somewhere and put a deposit down if you hate the area. It might be full of young professionals, but you want, you're moving with your family and you know, your husband and kids or whatever. So be really mindful of the areas and every area has a different vibe in Vancouver. So it's super important. So yeah, they've got contact info here. And if you reply, sometimes they have, there we go, there's a name and I'm not gonna put their email or text up here, but there is contact information there. It looks pretty legitimate, but again, yes, there's photos, but I would go and have a look before, you know, you put any money down. So yeah, there's a perfect example. So now that we're done with Craigslist, let's move on to Facebook Marketplace because that is another great way to find rooms here in Vancouver. Alrighty, on to Facebook. I'm going to quickly go through this for you. So I'm on Marketplace. So sign into your Facebook and you go to Marketplace and go down to Property for Rent. Once you're in there, a lot, it kind of looks like Craigslist. See, there's different numbers showing you how many properties are in the area. So that's, let's look at around Canby Village. There's 15 properties available. So I would click in that and it comes up on the right hand side. So here we go. This one looks quite reasonable. So let's look at this beautiful home. Um, I try to, okay. I'm obviously gonna cover up the address and the name, but here is a perfect example. It's a share house. It's really beautiful, great detailed photos. It's starting May 15th, it gives you a description and you can see photos here. And then you honestly just go down to send seller a message and you say, hi, I'm really interested. And you create a time and a place to meet up. What I can say from this is again, be super mindful. Like there are so many properties available, but so many can be dodgy. So just be really mindful who you're giving your information to. And if you have a work phone, maybe use that instead of your private number. And just be really, keep it as a business transaction and don't try to take it personally if you don't find a property straight away. But there are so many going, but so many deals are not great. So yeah, so that is basically it. You can just go through Facebook Marketplace and take the time to create a little bio for yourself that you can just copy and paste and just send it to a bunch of different people. Be mindful who you give your information out to and don't be so quick to trust everyone. A lot of people just wanna fill a room and they won't tell you the whole story. So take a lot of photos, ask some questions, ask about the landlord, ask about the history of the home, check the water pressure, check for plugs, check if you know things work. Um, and don't be afraid to ask a lot of questions because it's a it's a two-way street. If you're living with people, you need to know them as much as they need to know you and just be true to you and stick to your guns. And if something feels off, it probably is. But yeah, good luck out there. Stay safe in the rental you know, market out in Vancouver. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you again so much for watching this quick little video. I hope this helps at all for you to find your next rental in Vancouver. Vancouver is an amazing city to live in. It can be really tricky, but there is so much going and you just have to be really mindful of where you want to spend your money in terms of if you want to spend more being close to the city or if you don't mind commuting in and living about, you know, an hour out and having more space to call home. So there are a few things to think about. If you have any other questions, let me know and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye. Look at your feelings. Show me you want it. You've been a fan. Ain't no more talking. Need you to bet.